Word of the first victory of Prince Selaf and his Liberation Army quickly spreads far and wide, <laughs> inspiring courage anew in the Empire's victims. Still, more uprisings erupt across Jugdral, but once again, precious few are properly organized and are easily crushed, and the death toll climbs ever higher. Even more than during my Iron Man runs. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but Leonster, a kingdom in the Thracian Peninsula, Prince Leif, the son of Quan, had raised an army with the aid of the Knight Finn. Y you don't like these characters that much, do you? Nah, whatever. This is FE4. This is a much better game than whatever these losers are from. <laughs> but they have suffered a devastating loss before King Bloom's vast hordes and are stranded in hostile ground. Before Selaf lies the Yeet Desert, ruled by the Lopterian Ksutov of the Yeet Shrine, the oasis city of Darna, governed by the ex-merchant Bramzel and the captain of his cell sword army, Jabaro, and Fort Melgan, guarded by Prince Ishtor, your favorite, Fuck and the renowned you. General Liza. Liza? Liza. Liza, I don't know. Lies. Lies, lies, lies! Look <laughs> King Bloom himself, the son of the late Duke Reptor, awaits at the capital city of Elster with his niece, the mage Tinny. Guess who's recruitable? <laughs> In Revo, Selef and the warriors of his Liberation Army now prepare themselves to embark on a journey and come to the aid of their allies in faraway Leonster. Each warrior sets aside their worries as, under Selef's leadership, they prepare for the new battle on their horizon. Aw yeah. Welcome, Aww, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, to Chapter 7, Beyond the Desert. Yeet. Yeet! <sighs> we must yeet these characters beyond the desert. Luckily, unlike the last desert map, not very little of this map is actually a desert, thank god. <clears throat> Finn, what's the situation? Any word from the other division yet? We failed, my lord. Every last soldier in the Ulster Raid is dead. This is a crippling blow to our army. We've lost most of our might in one fell swoop. This can't be happening. I thought this was our big chance. Was all of this useless all along? Damn it all. I'll strangle Bloom himself with my bare hands. Please calm yourself, my lord. This isn't the end quite yet. I've just had a word with King Lewin. He's sending Princess Celis... <laughs> Princess. He's sending Prince Celis Liberation Army to back us up. Until then, no matter what, my lord, we must endure the siege. Or it was hair's long, bags, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> Alternatively, we could just use the return bands we all inherited and go to go there straight away. <laughs> Prince Selif, you say? He's the son of my father's old friend Sigurd, and of Empress Deidre, right? I pray we can meet him soon. Perhaps if we merge our efforts with his, we'll have a better chance of protecting the people from the Empire. That's right, Leaf. Besides, if we just let ourselves loose now, wouldn't your men's deaths all be in vain? Hey, it's Lacus's. You know, I just realized, you know, she looks so much more like Lacus's in this game compared to FP5. It's, it's, he has Lagos' portrait, I think, but just with a different hairdo and a feather pin. Yeah, it's I, it's uncanny, really. It's been a while since I played F, F, FE4 Generation 2 without substitutes, so looking at it now, I'm like, wow, she really looks like Lagos' in this game. Yeah, I mean, it's not as bad as Larce, but jeez. I think we should abandon the castle for now and seek refuge near the Western Church. Hmm, you're right, I suppose we don't have much choice now. Very well, our priority now is to play out this defensively for the time being. Until Prince Selv gets here, we must endure. Western Church, Rhea triggered. <laughs> Infidels. <laughs> Execute them. <laughs> What's your problem now? Can't you capture even a worthless as castle as this? Are you worms taking this seriously? Y yes, my lord. The thing is, though the enemy is proving to be of a Brazilian sort, we're struggling to breach their defenses. Buffoons! All of you! You really think I want to hear excuses? I want Leonster ceased! No more delays! If you waste any more time on this, then we'll have to contend with those Isakian mongrels as well. Y yes my lord, we will strike immediately, my lord. I I'm, o I'm only a generic boss, cut me some slack here. He doesn't even like actually show up on the map, this guy. This, this no, he doesn't. Come out, just has no it's this guy, so. but they forgot to add a portrait to him. And a yeah. name. Meanwhile... It's okay, that guy's like five more times in the game, so it's fine. Oh boy, those rumors weren't kidding. That place was as full as brim with treasure. It's been a long time since I had a hole like this. Hole. But I can't afford to dawdle now. Still gotta get out of here, and quick. Gotta go fast. 
Oh, Shannon goes faster. Hey, excuse me. Hand that sword over. You can keep everything else, but I need the sword. Where do you think you get off? Trying to take someone else's hard-earned goods. Do you have any ideas how tough it was to get my hands on this sword? If you want it, come get it. <laughs> I've never seen his word before. Nincom poop. It's Google time. Nincom poop. Nincom poop. A foolish or stupid person. <laughs> no. Well, Nincom all right, the uh, Project Naga. You're creative. I'll give it to you. What? Wait. Once hallway. What? Have you said plundered our treasury? And they absconded with the Balmung? You fools, go seize them now. Er, yes, your grace, but er, your grace? Surely a master of dark magics from your caliber could crush common thieves such as these with a single blow, even from here? I admit, I misplaced my book of Fenrir like every other goddamn dark mage in the series. My men are scaring the side to find it, but so far it has yet to emerge. Uh, understood, your grace. If, in that case, my clan and I will take a few mercenaries and pursue them. We swear to you, Your Grace, that we will have that treasure back where it belongs, post haste. I don't re I remember this happening in other games too. I don't remember exactly where. I know it is in FE5 with the poison guy or something. Yeah, in FE5, uh, in the Palace of Evil, there is uh, they. And I'm pretty sure it happens yeah, in one. That's other a great game. name for a palace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just Raedric things. Uh huh. So the route to Lanster requires that we cross this vast desert. Yes. Yeah. The Yid Shrine's the real problem here. It's controlled by the Lopterian Order. The Order's fell mages infest the desert, mercilessly assaulting anyone they find in it. People taken to calling the region the Desert of Death. A fitting name, really. I can only imagine how awful travelers struggle there. I wonder, perhaps if it's possible to seize the shri shrine from the Order? Heh, <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. There's always a way, but this one won't be easy. We need to make sacrifices. So be it. At this point, we've little choice. Not to mention Shannon is likely still in the desert. For now, let's focus on taking control of Yeet. All else will begin there. Max sacrifices are my speciality. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, welcome. Welcome to chapter seven. It's big. This is might be one of the biggest maps actually. Maybe aside from the final one. Yeah. Might be the biggest. I think so. I have no idea. So there's a desert here. Luckily, you don't actually cross a lot of it. Like chapter five had a lot more desert than this. Um you can actually not touch the sand once, I think, if you really want to. Yeah. I mean that direction, yeah, but Selif has to go to the Yeet Shrine. That Does takes he, some though? Desert. Not much, though. Oh, right. Yeah, no. Yeah, he has to, he has to seize the Yeet Shrine. That's yeah, true. Yeah, he has to seize where those guys won't get out of the way. Yeah. The yellow guys. So there's a lot of things happening on this map. This is actually a really cool map. Oh, though it can also be a little bit frustrating, which we'll get into. So yes. you have your cast. You have your forces here. And uh, Leaf, uh, Nana, and Finn are all holding out against the siege from here. Not particularly dangerous. But it can be a little bit tedious with Leaf sometimes if he is a little bit unlucky. And then at the same time, you also have like um, Sh uh, Shannon and uh, Patty struggling over here. It's mostly Shannon though. Patty will basically just be standing in the background trying. And um, you can either run away with Shannon here or you can try to go for the shrine, which is what I'll try to do. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, I usually do like a mix of like running away a little bit and then coming back to uh, take yeah. over the shrine. So luckily, you can do arena stuff and then you can save. Luckily, because yeah. you haven't moved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the arena stuff. And then I'm going to save the game. And if Shannon takes a hit from one of these guys, I'll just reload. <laughs> that's yeah. that's how basically how we're going to do it. So before we start doing the arena and all the base preps, we have a lot of units to talk about. I was thinking what we're going to do is in this episode, we're going to be talking about these three. And then in the next episode, we're going to talk about these two. Or else it's just going oh, sure. to be like an hour of us talking about units. Yeah, which has never been a problem before, but okay. I'm trying to <laughs> spread it out a little bit, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Fair so enough, uh, let's just start with the uh, with the uh, with you know what everyone's been waiting for. Uh, no, 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 guys. <laughs> no. It's Yay. Leaf. It's Leaf. Your favorite, Yay. right? I love Leaf. It's my lord of my favorite game, actually. FE5. Yeah. Not this game, but I still like him in this game. He's, he's great. But before we do that, though, there's one thing I, I've always wondered about. Maybe you can shed some light on this. So, this right here, uh, in Tracia, this is where Leaf loses his army. This is where um, Dorius charges ahead, right? And gets wiped out. Yeah. I mean, that was made up in FE5. It was was it? Okay, because it retconned a little bit. Because. I've always wondered, because I, I, I always thought that this scene happened to symbolize Leaf's army getting wiped out, which explains why they're not part of FE4, right? But then they didn't get wiped out because they, like, they go on to, like, do stuff after that? So, what happened FE5 there? FE5 just has a different imagination, a different way things went than FE4 in some cases, which is why I'm against the combined remake. One of the reasons for that is because 
one of the games has to become non-canon in order for one continuous story to happen. And FE4 and FE5 just have different takes on the situation. Yeah. Like in FE5, the way Seleph and Leaf work together is very different from FE4. Because it's strange, because since Leaf literally loses his army at the start of the of this chapter, yeah. that would be a very convenient excuse as to why they're not here. Yep. Anyway, but enough about that. And FE5 did do a lot of shit, so... Yeah, so <laughs> let's talk about Leaf, shall we? He is the uh, child of uh, Quan and Etlin. He is a child unit, although you cannot influence his pairing, but you can influence what uh, items you pass down to him. And in sure this case, can. in this case, he takes over all of Etlin's gear. And we put a lot of stuff on him. I think Leaf was kind of just like our. We just dumped the stuff, a lot of stuff on Etlin that we didn't need. Yeah, stuff that was like worth money, but we didn't really have, need to have between chapters 4 and 5. Yeah, we were going to pass down the Pursuit Ring to him, that was always the plan, but then we realized we kind of wanted it, because since Ethelyn leaves at the end of, um, like, three. chapter 3, that means that's two chapters we get without the Pursuit Ban, and we wanted the Pursuit Ban, so we were like, okay, we're just going to let Leaf take a little hit, because of course Leaf doesn't have uh, a Pursuit inherently, which is one of his big weaknesses. So that's kind of why we did that. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about Leaf as a unit. So, uh, Leaf starts off really, really weak. He, his bases are not fantastic, and again, lack of pursuit makes him just... Uh, it, it really makes him kind of hard to level up. Though, if you notice, his base stats are kind of high because we did cap out Ethlin, and we came close to capping up Quan. So he's gotten a little bit... Uh, he's gotten a few extra points of base stats from his parents, which is nice. Uh, this Leaf is actually on the stronger scale compared to his averages, so... That's nice to see. Uh, however, his growth rates are ridiculous. He has minor uh, Nova Holy Blood, he has minor Boulder Holy Blood, and uh, he will grow really, really quickly. Uh, if you can get Paragon on him, you can get him up, then he becomes extremely good. And of course, he does promote to Master Knight, one of the best classes in the game. So once that happens, Leaf, Leaf I think, will be one of your strongest fighters. Um, and that's a pretty hard title to contend with, considering, you know, there's major Holy Blood kits running around, but Leaf can definitely outmatch them. He can do the cool thing where he, uh, he attacks with a bow and then counters back and equips a melee weapon, it's really strong. Uh, he can practically use every weapon in the game, I think, aside from, like, a few light tomes and dark magic. But no one yes. can use dark magic in this game, so that doesn't really matter. The difficult part is getting Leaf there. He, he will need some help go, get going through the arena. Not knowing Pursuit means he won't attack as many times. He does come with Crit, and he does have Adept like his father, but Adept isn't super reliable. Uh, but what we're probably going to do is we're just going to like uh, just let him borrow the Brave Sword with Crit on it, and just have him use that to clear the Gauntlet. Um, now, raiding Leaf is, is tricky, I think. It's very tricky, because he does start out incredibly weak, and then he becomes incredibly strong. So how do we raid a character like that? Uh, I don't think rating him 3 stars is fair, because, you know, he gets a mount eventually and becomes really good. But he's not really a 5 star unit either. But I, at the same time, I also feel like 4 stars is a little too high for him, but I think that's the rating I'm gonna settle on. I think he's a 4 star unit, because he does wreck house after he becomes a Master Knight, and there is some merit to that. So, again, the tricky part is just getting him there. Yeah, I was actually torn between 4 and 5 stars for Leaf, so I'm surprised he oh, wow. considered 3 stars. Um... You say he's he's very weak at base, and you're, the lack of pursuit really hurts, not gonna lie. It, it kind of sucks raising him, but if you look at his bases, they're not actually all that bad. I think his strength is high enough to 2 hit kill most generic enemies, like the Steel Blade or whatever, which is not, you know, the weapon in high demand or anything. It's pretty easy to get a strong sword for him on him. Uh, but, like, Leaf's utility depends so much on, on, like, item and weapon inheritance. If you can sell him, if you can give him, like, a pursuit ring or something expensive, like a bargain ring, uh, he will have a pretty easy time getting Paragon, and it is possible to promote him by the next chapter, but that is like the ultimate amount of investment. That's what low, low turn count players do, because Leaf, after he promotes, becomes your only A rank staff user that has a mount. Oh, right, I didn't even know that. That's, Whereas, this is funny. Like, even Pegasus Knights, they promote the Falcon Knights, they get B rank staffs, and uh, Nana, for example, Troubadours, they get DC rank staffs, unless they have like minor Edda Holy Blood. What or if you pair Arrakis up with Claude? Mm hmm. <laughs> Well, yeah, that is the one way you could do it, I guess. But other than that, yeah, it's pretty much just going to be Leaf. Um, and, like, A-Rank staffs is important for low, low turn count runs and speed runs and stuff. Because uh, they A-Rank means you can use the rescue staff, which you can also pass down if you pair Lana with Claude. Or maybe Azel with Idine, and then you do something weird with... Yeah, they have to give the Sedu that way, so it's a little less relevant. But I think on average, most players should try to promote him by Chapter 9 at the latest, and preferably Chapter like eight in the middle somewhere but i can understand why it takes a while it took me a while my first playthrough because uh, it really is tricky raising him up but as i said his strength is good he will sometimes unexpectedly one run things with adepts or critical but obviously we just want to give him a good sword and like have him clear the arena for sure 
Uh, if you can, the sooner you can give him to Paragon and bring the better off you are with Leaf in general. He's by far the best investment of your resources, but it does take a little bit to get him going. If you can just get Pursuit, he's just a really good foot unit. Honestly, I think he's still like better than Larsay and Ulster because you know he's still fast enough to double. He has insane strength and his HP growth is so high. He'll get plus two HP a lot. He'll be very bulky. Um, kind of the same as like uh, Ulster and Larsay, but better in my opinion. Uh, I'll give him four stars because of Brady. Like it does take some resources. But I think it's really good, and he's one of my favorites. I can't not rate him higher than three. <laughs> I can I cannot rate him lower than four stars. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy so much. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at his. Uh, well, he's. I almost said his sister, but that's not accurate. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she. She. They're kind of like siblings in a way, but they're. Yeah, they're he's. Al he, she's also his love interest. I don't really know. They what are like adoptive siblings, but not in the fates way, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> so here is Nana. She is the daughter of Rakasis or Lakasis. I don't know what we call her. I think it was Rakasis in this translation. That's what I'm gonna say. And Beowulf. Of course, we 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 paired Rakasis up with Beowulf because it is by far the best pairing for Dermot. But, um, you know, Nana, it's not like she doesn't benefit from it either. I mean, she gets Pursuit, which is nice. Uh, she gets, and she also gets an insane strength growth. So that's kind of cool. Uh, she we, we passed on a lot of items on her. The Earth Sword, the Miracle Sword. She has the Men's Staff, the Heal, I Return Staff, which is nice. We forgot to repair it to full, but that's fine. And the Return Ban. Not really sure why we put the Return Ban on her. It allows her to immediately return to the castle, but I think we want to keep her around. Yeah, there's, there's two ways we can approach the chapter. Either they just yeet themselves to the home castle, where they have access to more XP, but it's XP that others could have gotten as well, mm -hmm. uh, like all the Dark Mages, but it's technically more for Leaf. Yes. But since uh, we're going to keep Paragon on Celeph for a little longer or something, or like, maybe not, but uh, either way, since Celeph is not promoted yet, I don't think there's much of a point to that. We could just keep him in this area and do the traditional thing where we feed Leaf kills. The reason I like the Earth Sword on her, though, is because... Uh, she can heal the other two, but she can't heal herself. So this is a good way to get like some health. That is that is very very true. And like that same goes for the return ban. She has to return staff to so, like return the others to the castle. But we also want her to get out of there. She cannot like defend Leinster on her own. So that's why return ban is nice on her. Mm -hmm. So uh, with Beowulf as her father, Nana's actually not bad in combat. She has a seventy percent strength growth, so her strength will actually take off. Although with Nana, most of her experience is going to come from staves. We won't actually attack all that much with her but it is nice to get her through the arena and i think with this with this parent she she will actually clear the arena pretty reliably i think if we can give her because i'm pretty sure she can use the uh, she has a rank and swords thanks to her azul blood so she can get that um she can get the brave sword that self uses just give her that she'll just blast her way through the arena and shouldn't be a problem at all so she'll get a little bit of experience money that way, and then she'll just use staves to level up the other way. She promotes the Paladin, and that gives her some additional bulk, and she actually becomes a decent combat unit, but because she is a mounted staff user, I don't think you'll be seeing Nana doing a whole lot of combat in this playthrough, um, except for the arena. She's mostly just going to be running around healing people. But, you know, she does that really well, and a mounted healer is definitely good. I rate her 4 out of 5 stars. Really useful unit. For sure. I, I like Mount of Return utility, especially personally, because there's a lot of times where you want to warp people between castles, and the, the more mobile your turn user, the more options you have in that regard. Uh, I will say about Nana is her bases are absolute trash, and this is mostly because of the Troubadour class uh, that doesn't have really have very high class bases, and those are like the foundation that IP4 bases are built upon, it's your class bases. And then on top of that, you get like your, your parents' additions to their class bases. So for example, the, the fact that her mom was Lacus's, you know, the Master Knight with those insane stats, those are mostly coming from her class bases as a Master Knight. So as a result, she doesn't actually pass down that many stats. If you don't, re if you don't remember, Lacus's doesn't actually have very good growth rates. No. And also, real quick, like, clarification. Uh, she can't use the Brave Sword because of, like, the Sword's minimum. She would have that even without the His Old Blood, I think. Almost anyone can use the Brave Sword except noobs, like, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, most people can use the Brave Sword in Gen 2 because almost everyone has some kind of class that can use it. But, you know, Hell's Old Blood lets her use, like, Blade and stuff if you really need her to. But her accuracy is so shit, I would not recommend it. She actually misses with the Earth Sword a lot, I've found. But the Miracle Sword is pretty nice on her. So she's female. She's one of the few people who can use it. Also, her portrait in ninety five is infinitely prettier. Yeah. Uh, so for that reason, <laughs> I'm going to give her four stars. Oh, wow. Shit. This is the mecha over here. 
All right, and then we have Finn, of course. Uh, so Finn, here he is. We already talked about him, and we'll show him again with his new new stats. This is how we left him in the first generation. We opted not to promote Finn because uh, we figured that it's a lot easier to just get him the final levels he needs in the second generation, where experience is more plentiful. Uh, generation one is far a lot more stingy, and it's with, with its experience. And uh, there's characters like Quan who takes up a lot of a uh, lot of the action because we need to get them capped up before they leave. So we held Finn a lot uh, back, even though he is pretty good in the first generation. And we also opted to uh, pass his Brave Lance down to uh, Fee, I think. You know what? Did yes. We, what yes, we did. So <clears throat> The only reason we did that is because he's the only child who can inherit the Brave Lance. Uh, no, yes, yes. I, I was just about to say he's not Fee's dad, but we did pass down the Brave Lance by, by giving, giving Finn's Brave Lance to Noish. That's what we did. Uh, I don't think we paired... Finn's not the dad of anyone in this playthrough, is he? Uh, no, I don't believe we paired him, which is good, because if you do pair him, then all he's left with is his Iron Lance, which is kind of annoying. Yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, he's level 18, but his... I think our Finn got really blessed, looking at his stats right now. They're pretty good for a level 18 Finn. I mean, Finn just has really good stats. Also, real quick before I forget, we get to Brave Lance to Aranus, not Noish. Yes, right, 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 yeah. Thanks for clearing up that. But yeah, I mean, we're going to promote him soon enough, and he's going to be a staple unit throughout the second generation. Finn is really good. Uh, four out of five stars. Good, good stats, good utility, tanky. He just has everything. He's really good. Despite having no holy blood, he's on par with the rest of the units. Yeah, I think Finn is, like, especially Gen 2, Finn is home to a lot of misconceptions about like how viable of a unit he is and how important he is. A lot of people think you should promote him just for the part he's in right now where you have to defend Leaf and Nana. Uh, but I think with proper positioning, almost any leveled Finn, like, like sure, base level Finn is like a little bit more annoying to use, but he doesn't need to be promoted for his part at all. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fend off the enemies and feed plenty of them to leave without Finn being promoted at all. A lot of people also feel like they should leave the Hero Lance on him for that reason. Again, I don't think that's necessary at all. Uh, a lot of people also think that Finn is very shitty in this generation after this chapter. Even like because in like, Generation 1 he's like really good with the Brave Lance and this generation like a lot of better people around. Uh, there's some things that would really hurt him. The fact that he cannot use swords means he's always being weighed down by at least 12. Uh, more if you use him like a Javelin. Like being locked to Lances can kind of hurt a character sometimes. Uh, but his attack is pretty high, he does still have Miracle setup, so he can always clear the arena if you want him to. He can always make some kind of invincible setup. Uh, but without the Brave Lance, he won't be doubling as much. Gen 2 enemies are generally a little bit stronger. Uh, that can be annoying, but Fink can still like hold his own, generally. And the fact that he doesn't need experience to get somewhere is also worth something. Uh, I think Falcoma's uh, LTC run, like, I I've been plugging it a lot, but it uses Finn a lot and shows just how good he is, even with... Um, you know, the fact that he doesn't level up at all. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty impressive when you think about it. I don't I don't actually remember how much he was used. He was definitely not used as much as Oifu was. But he's surprisingly useful, I think. So I would say Finn, I think overall for the whole game, I would still give him four stars for performance. But I think in, in generation two he's closer to three stars. But overall I would still say the character still worth four stars. Yep. So these guys are going to be fighting down here against this army. Uh, this is where we'll end up eventually. Fighting against these name nameless guys as well as Bloom, wielding the Mjolnir. No, but, I don't think they'll be fighting him. <laughs> no, they won't be fighting him. I don't think any of them will. Although Leaf does have a combo with him if you if you're suicidal. Yeah, I mean I've, I've done it before. <laughs> but now it's time for what everyone loves. It's uh it's arena and item management. Yes. So Shout uh, out to the heroes players. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna sell uh, sell his brave axe, and we're going to pick that up with uh, Johal Vier. Because who else is going to use a brave axe at this point, right? Yeah, for sure. It's relatively so cheap. We have a powering in the convoy just trailing around. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. But of course... <laughs> probably nothing. <laughs> probably nothing. But of course, the most important part here is uh, item uh, paragon management. That is what we need to do. Uh, so we'll start off by sending Sullivan to the arena. We'll see what level he ends up at. But I think we might... So I don't know. How Let's go to our guys and actually see who can who is coming close to getting the paragon ring. Because I don't yes. think that's that many, actually. No. So, uh, we're always to talk about uh, Ulster, doesn't need it. Leaf, as Johavir is 4,000. Dermot has a uh, bargain. We could probably yeah. hold off Arena on Dermot and give him give him around with Paragon, I think. Yeah, if we can get him around 700. Uh, 7,000 or 8,000 gold, then he can buy a Paragon Ring. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like that. But it's, it's a little tricky. Finn can not afford it yet. No. Doesn't really need to. Uh, Lester uh, is not not gonna make not it. Not gonna make it. Uh, Arthur not not gonna make it. Oif is not gonna make it. Patty has bargain. I don't know. It depends on how much she steals, but we'll see. 
Uh, Larce doesn't need it. Lana won't, don't want to use it. Julia won't need it. Fee is actually pretty close. We'll see. I uh, think she only needs 18,000, which is still a lot. To, like That is a her. lot, so we'll see. Uh, Nana, so really, there's... We can probably just keep the Paragon Ring on Selif, I think. Yeah, you could... Yeah, you could just save it for... Yeah, because no one else can like, afford it right now. So I think that might be the way to go, actually. You're right. Yeah. So, as always, this is Mecha's favorite part. He loves that I actually show off the stats with the Gladiators. Right, he I'll told, back. He told <laughs> me earlier that I was like, Manx, this is, this is what I'm looking forward to every time. Yeah, so let's check out the Arena Gauntlet of Chapter 6. Spreading misconceptions, I'm nice. Yeah. <laughs> so the first uh, opponent that we uh, face here is called the Tolstoy. And he is a fighter. He comes with an Iron Axe and a Hand Axe. So if you if you have a ranged weapon, he'll equip his Hand Axe instead. Uh, spo so spoiler alert, uh, Solf's gonna decimate this arena. Yeah, Absolutely. I was gonna bring up the fact that you could use a different weapon, but if you're planning to sell around to Brave Sword, there's really no need to, I think. I think that's actually just going to make it easy. I don't think I'm actually going to sell it around that much, because uh, I think Larsen Ulster doesn't need it. Uh, no. Oifi probably doesn't either. Uh, I, I mean, think... you talked about, like, Nana using it potentially. Up next, we have a Boxman, which I always think is a funny name. <laughs> it's a mage that comes with the Thunder Tome and really nothing else. This arena is kind of generic. There's not a lot of interesting units in here because it is the first one. There are a couple of Easter eggs in here, though. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's decimate the bot. This, sounds familiar. This, this guy is the, the guy that's responsible for George winning, uh, almost winning Choose Your Legends because he bought it. <laughs> 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 nice fighting, mate. Great baits, mate. Uh, up next, we have Kruger. He is Lance Knight. Comes with a Steel Lance and a Javelin. And a lot of these gladiators have German names. I don't really know why. It's kind of weird. It's like the German arena. I sure love fighting in Germany. It's <laughs> great experiences fighting against Germans. So you may go That's like, oh person. no, oh no. Weapon Triangle does it now. No. So, oh, so, no. So it just murders everything here. Oh no. <laughs> uh, up next we have Munstein. He is a Myrmidon with an Iron Sword. And uh, if you, <laughs> which isn't that particularly threatening, however, if you go into this uh, gauntlet with a ranged uh, member, you actually unlock a bit of an Easter egg. You meet Castor, the hunter. So, yeah, he's here. This is something FE4 does a lot. It includes some earlier characters from earlier games in the arena every now and then. It's kind of cute. I assume Castor is his Project Naga name, because uh, I was he looking at Strange Force. He was named Kush there, Kushim. 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 Yeah. yeah, no, but yeah, no, I think they just changed it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. But yeah, Monstein didn't last very long, as you can see. No. And then uh, up next we have uh, Whipner. He is an <laughs> armor knight with an iron lance and a javelin. Yeah, nothing. Steel lance, from what I can see. Really? I mean, that's what my data says. Maybe my notes let's... are wrong. Let's see. Well, let's see what the arena says. You are right, Mecca. My notes are wrong. I copy these of Serenus Forest, so that, that might be a might be a mistake. Well, they want to change. You might be really bad at copying then. That is. I'm looking at Serenus Forest. Okay, I'm I'm just bad. All right. Yes. So yeah. Can spo confirm. Spoiler alert: Solus gonna win again. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Thanks. You're ruining the series for me right now. <laughs> it's the least no, exciting arena golf but ever. And it's yeah. Not much of a gauntlet, is it? No, not really. Oh, like the arena trashing. So and up next we have Randoka. He is a warrior. And this is like the first kind of scary guy. He comes with a silver axe, so he hits pretty hard. Axe guy to scary ninety four. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> and he also has a that's... steel bow in case you attack him with a ranged guy. But yeah, no, this guy hits kind of hard, but he Talib is gonna murder him. Eighteen weight, baby. Yeah, but I mean he hits hard against lance users. He's a bit tricky. But what well, lance users cannot use a sword in this game, besides like Finn. Finn. <laughs> yeah, but like Finn can like brave lance quadruple the guy, so he's not afraid either. That is true. Uh, and up next, the final boss of this arena is Ufuna. He is a general, and he comes with a silver blade, so that's how you know he's the real deal. And also a steel bow, in case you don't want to fight the silver blade. I love Pavice. I've missed it so much. Yeah, let's uh, see how many hits Selif needs this to kill this guy. This is the tricky guy, I think. Because a lot of people will, like, need like a lot of hits to hit him, and then you can also activate Pavice on a lot of them. Yeah, but Selif just goes, nope. <laughs> nuh uh. Nuh uh. I don't need an armor slayer to crit this guy. Nope. So, uh, there we go. Level 17. Alright. Not bad. Still ways to go, though. 
Yeah, so I've decided we're actually not going to be arenaing a lot more than this. We're going to send uh, Lester True. And I know you guys want to see everything, but uh, I feel like FE4 is like too much arena. So, uh, and a lot of these kids are like the reason why I okay, showed up. <laughs> the reason why I showed showed a lot of arena. The reason why I showed a lot of arena in the last uh, gen was because it was a lot more exciting. Here, like Larson and Ulster, they're going to win 100%, and uh, Arthur going to win 100%. Although, you know, just just because I know you guys want to see it. It's completely unnecessary, but we're going to do it. Are you going to do the whole thing? <laughs> no, just with him? just just oh. one. Just one. Yeah. Just one Pringle. Yeah. Just one. All right. All right. There you go. You got it. I like it. double thing. Yeah. Happy now, guys? Nice hit rate. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think anyone is going to be happy until they see Larsay in Arena. So all, right, all right. All right. We'll do Larsay next. Yay. I mean, it's it's also nice to just level her up before you going out into chapter. Of course, of course. I'm just saying some of these I'm going to do off screen because uh, uh, because the, there's just going to be too much arena. But yes, we'll 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 send a little Arce true because why not? IGN reviews FE4, 7.8 out of 10. Too, <laughs> too, too much arena. Too much arena. Remake actually. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, many, uh, yeah, Larsay does not have the. Uh, I'm actually kind of okay. So here's the thing: even if she loses, she is just going. Like, you can just send her in until she procs Astra, and she'll win. Yes. But wow, I actually just... had an idea for um, what's his face, Arthur. So oh yeah, he, he's gonna clear the arena no matter what, right? But he might need a crit against some enemies on the field. So if he, if you make him lose with like the thunder or fire tone. You could end up at 1 HP during a chapter, and you just arena with him later. And that way you can get a whole city crit against anything you want. Oh, well that... But it does mean he's a glass cannon that you cannot really expose unless he faces zero hits. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but it could be fun. Could be fun. I also see myself having to restart because of it. That's also true. And also, like, uh, he might not even lose. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Because even without a whole city, he's pretty damn good mm -hmm. with Wrath and everything. We'll see. We'll see what you end up with. We'll see. We'll see. So uh, we're going to, just to, to, to clear this out in my head, we're going to arena with the sword kids, then we're going to arena with Lester and Oifi. Yeah, you should do Lester first because he's more shaky, and then every time you need like an iron burn, you just send a sword kingdom. Yes. For another level. I think that's a good idea. Because, uh, yeah, aside from that, I think everyone else will kind of hold off until... I mean, Irene, we, we can send Arthur true, of course. He's going to win 100 Probably send Oifi too, as well, because he only has like 8,000 gold. He's not going to make Paragon this chapter unless you like donate to him with Patty. That's true. With, and oh, wow. She missed two 90s gold. in a row. What the hell? Man, aren't you bugged? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's not even a challenge for these kids. They're so fucking good. Yeah, just like for clarification, the reason we're doing these without like regard for gold is because they already have Paragon, so they don't, need to, they don't have to buy it. Nope, they'll never, and and I think you're right in saying that they probably don't need a single kill on the field. No. Which actually leads me to think, um, are we going to do the stay behind with the staff unit and just warp? Uh, where would you like to warp to? You can't really do that to start the map. No, but like eventually, do you want to, oh, when we're done with this, do you want to send all the kids out to fight? Well, I really like having Julia out here against the Dark Mages, especially if Seleph is going to be running off, because uh, she's going to tank them with Nosferatu. Mm -hmm. So you could leave Lana behind and Warp Spam in here, just so you can like don't have to do it later. Yes. Be nice. And, like, there's a couple of kids that could do it as well. Like, Corporal's going to have to do it at some point. Set probably won't need to, because he has like, a lot of other options to do. Uh, what other staff kits are there, even besides these four that we've mentioned? Uh, Nana, I guess, but she can't use Warp. She can just return. Mm-hmm. Same thing, but yeah. yeah, it's there. Um, any other staff users that I missed? I guess like promoted Tinny. Yeah, is another one. But we uh, won't promote promoter in this uh, chapter. So yeah, this is wow. Lars has got twenty skill already. I, it's pretty good, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, pretty yeah. nice. They're good staff wise. That's that's all I'm gonna say. All right, so let's uh, send Lester into the arena, and then I think we're going to do the rest off screen. Oh, fair enough. So uh, um, let's see if he gets through it. I keep forgetting. I think the killer boy is more expensive, right? The bow. Yes, the killer boy is very expensive. But the, I mean, there are some. Like, if he loses, I might send him in with the killer bow and try to win that way. Yeah. I do think this is going to be challenging for Lester. 
Yeah, you can you can get stuck sometimes with the bows being like low hits. That they is a very good level. Avoid by the by the arenas plus twenty avoid. Yes. And just generally being heavy, that kind of sucks as well. Yeah, I feel I like I feel like in the arena, if you're already struggling a little Lots bit with accuracy, spaghetti. the twenty avoid kind of screws you over. Lots of yeah, I mean it doesn't really work like that in like one RN, but still I can see what you mean. Yeah, no, I I, I, I get what you mean. Like I get what you mean. Yeah. When it's one RN, it's twenty percent is twenty percent, not more yeah. or less, but. It, 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 it at least feels like if you Lots go from like 60 to yeah. 40, it like feels Lots worse than going from 100 to 80, you know? And in the end, feeling is what matters Lots when you're doing that. Absolutely. It's not about facts. It's all Lots about how I feel about the game. It's yeah. not how it yeah, actually... Yeah, like what anyone else feels doesn't really matter. It's all about how I feel the numbers work. That's true. It's like economics, basically. <laughs> yeah, I think Castor, I think he's like very shaky on doubling that. I think Vadir had the same problem in Gen 1. Mm -hmm. uh, the killer bow is lighter, so that no, it actually seems to be. Lots seems to be of spaghetti. Yes, the killer bow is lighter, so if we get double, then we Lots definitely have to swap it around. But I don't think there's like if we double Castor, I think we double all the other guys. Um. Well, yeah, because the warrior has negative speed. Yeah. <laughs> and so does the armor knight. Uh, will he though the, with the, the steel bow? Has, uh, oh, actually, yeah, you're right. But still, like, uh, well, actually. The warrior has 16 speed. Lots of so that's kind of fast. You might not double him, because the uh, Castor has uh, 10. So that's a big difference. And then Wolf is going to have the same speed as Castor. Lots so you will double him with the Great Bow. But you might want to switch to a Karak against Randor. Randok? Randok. His name is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's his name on Serenus Force. I don't know what the real one is. Mm -hmm. I mean, this used to be the real name, but Project Naga changed them. So now they're the real names. Yeah, I think I will do that, actually. I stepped Myrmidon earlier, but I meant Hunter, by the way, just before the comment section gets to me. Lots what do you mean? Comment section would never, never do something like that. No. Alright, let's get a on, get a, Yeah, he doubles. Lots That's nice. Spaghetti. I think he had... was kind of sad on these bow users early game, because he had, like, digit, single digit protect crit with him. Lots of spaghetti. Very high. Yes, because so, it's literally killer bows in this game, they just give you a crit equal to your skill. It's not, like, 30%. Yeah. Yeah, but when, you, when you're coming off of like GBA a Fire Emblem or even like DS Fire Emblem where it's like plus 20 crit or plus 30 crit, in this game it's just like, you can crit now, congrats, mm -hmm. <laughs> good luck. Alright. Yeah, you, you want a Silver Bow now, I think, or a Brave Bow, yeah. Yes. So I don't know if the Brave Bow is close to getting 50 kills, I don't think it is. Nah, no way. Like, oh, arena wow, kills don't come he goes first, oh, what the hell? Oh, interesting. He has yeah. the same speed as Castor. Or should have it anyway. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Did you... Maybe you didn't double cast her, but still, its speed should be the same. So Maybe they were tied. Something. Could have been the case. I don't know. I guess. Well, now he's at 1 HP. Well, that's fun. So, yeah, join us next time, guys, as we uh, take on the Ute Desert. So, uh, when we come back, I'll do some more arenaing off screen, and we'll talk about Chanan and Patty. Don't worry. I know there's one, one person in the comment section is very excited for Patty, so don't worry. We'll... Yeah, me. Chanan is great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you guys next time. Like and subscribe.